Welcome to episode 66 of our Comfy UI tutorial series. Today, I'll talk about outpainting, which is a technique where we use AI to extend an image beyond its original borders, allowing the model to imagine and generate what might exist outside the picture, such as continuing a landscape, adding background details, or turning a close-up into a wide, complete scene. So we are in the Comfy UI interface now, and we can load a workflow that you can get for free from Discord. Check the video description. The workflow is very similar to the Quen workflow, but I am using the Nunchaku Quen model because it is faster. If you don't have the Nunchaku node installed, you can check episode 64, and if you haven't tried Quen before, you can check episode 62. But even without those episodes, you can still install Nunchaku pretty easily. You just click here, and it will take you to a GitHub page. Then scroll down, download the zip archive, extract it, and install Comfy UI. After that, from the add-ons folder, you run the Nunchaku bat file, and you should be good to go. This installer only works with Windows and NVIDIA video cards. So when you open Comfy UI with this workflow, you should not get any red nodes, maybe just a warning about missing models, but I will show you how to get those. If you have a 40 series card or lower, you need to use int4 models, and if you have a 50 series card, you need to use fp4 models. You can click here to check different models you can try. I can use any of these models on my card, but if you have a 50 series, use the fp4 models. In this video, I am using this 8-step model, but you can also try a 4-step one if you want. I added a direct link to the model I am using, so just click here, then navigate to your Comfy UI folder, look for the Models folder, and inside it, you will find the Diffusion Models folder where you save the downloaded model. It's pretty big, so wait for it to finish downloading. In that Models folder, you will place all the other models according to the instructions. You download the Clip model from here and place it in the Clip folder. You download the VAE and place it in the VAE folder. Then we need the inpainting control net model, which you put in the control net folder. I am also using three custom nodes installed from the manager. After that, press the R key to refresh Comfy UI so it can detect your downloaded models. Here, you select the model you downloaded, the int4 or fp4 version, and the four step or eight step model. Because I selected the eight step model, I set the k sampler steps value to eight. If you selected the 4-step model, you set it to 4. That's all. We should be able to test the workflow now. The workflow is similar to the Quen workflow, but it has this inpainting node that is useful for inpainting, and of course, the outpainting that I am doing today. It all starts with the image we want to outpaint or expand at the edges. From this button, you can choose a file. I will go with this bunny for now. Then the image is scaled down to this size so it doesn't get too big because it doesn't work well with huge images. You can increase or decrease this value if you want. Then here we pad the image for outpainting. Basically, you tell it in what direction you want to add some padding. The values are in pixels. You can click and drag to use it like a slider, or you can click once and enter an exact value. I noticed it works well with 256 pixels, but in some cases, I was able to go up to 768 pixels. If it doesn't look right, reduce that value. It can be any value that is a multiple of 8. So let's say I add 256 pixels to the bottom. For the prompt, I often got better results without using a prompt and letting the AI decide what fits best. But in some cases, you can add a prompt, though it doesn't always work great which is why I prefer it without one. Let's run the workflow. If we look at the padding settings, we asked for 256 extra pixels at the bottom, and the 40 pixels is the feathering on the mask. You can't see it here because it applies to the mask, but it basically blurs the area between the bottom edge and the new area that was created. You will see the new image size here. It was 1,024 pixels before, and we added another 256 pixels at the bottom to get the new size. Then everything goes to the K sampler, and it creates a new image. This is the result, and we can compare before and after. You can see it did a perfect outpainting. Depending on the image, it might not always be perfect on the first try, but I got pretty good results with it. If I run it again, I get a new version. Looking at how long it took, in this case, it was around 18 seconds for generation on my RTX 4090 card. 
Let's change the edge where we want the outpainting. I will reduce the bottom to zero and set the left and top to 256 pixels, but you can try more or less depending on how much you need and adjust later if it doesn't look good. You can see in this preview the area where it is adding pixels and how big the final image will be. And this is the result. In my opinion, it did a good job outpainting this. Let's test with other images. I will try with this landscape 3D render. Let's add more, like 400 pixels to the left and right. You can see the new image size. Try not to go over 2000 pixels on any edge for better results. We got this generation, it kept the style, we got a full sun there, and everything looks good. Let's try another image, like this portrait of a robot girl. Let's say we add a big value to the bottom, like 768 pixels. When I run it, you can see how much it expanded. The final generation looks great. It was able to reconstruct the robot's body, and it blends perfectly with the rest of the image. You can run it multiple times to see if you get results that look even better. So you have a working workflow like this, but you need to scroll up a lot, and many nodes don't have settings that we actually need. Wouldn't it be nice to simplify the workflow and keep only what we need? Well, now you can with subgraphs. Let me show you how. My suggestion is to keep the load image and save image nodes outside the subgraph. I can delete the label, and I will also keep the compare image node with the save image node outside. Hold control and make a selection over all the other nodes. If you miss some, press the Shift key and add those to the selection as well. Now we have this icon for converting the group to a subgraph, or you can right-click and select Convert to Subgraph. And look at that. Now we have a tiny node that incorporates all those nodes. We can rearrange it, and now we have a small, clean workflow. You can resize it to see how it looks, but besides the connections, we cannot see any fields where we input our values. But we can add the ones we need. Let's rename the node to OutPaint. Now, if we use this icon, we can go inside the subgraph node. Here we can see all the nodes, plus one input for the image, and two outputs for the Save Image and Image Compare. On this bar, you can see two tabs now. The first one is the workflow, and the second one is the subgraph. If you have another subgraph inside this subgraph, you will see a third tab, and so on. To get back to the workflow, just click on the workflow name. Now we cannot see the subgraph anymore. To go back inside, click that button again. Let's say I want to have the option to select the models from the main workflow so I don't have to enter the subgraph each time to change it. When you hover on the left side, you will see a dot appear. You can click and drag a link from there and connect it to the second dot. Now we have that model name connected, so our subgraph node will have that input value. You can right-click and disconnect or even rename the slot. Let's name it Load a Model. Now, if we go outside the subgraph, we can see that value there. Let me resize it, and you can see it says Load a Model. So now I can use that to select the model I want. Let's go back inside, and let's say I want to get the clip model also there on the input. I will just drag the link and rename it to something easy to remember, or just keep it as it is. Now we have access to that as well. Pretty cool, right? Back inside, let's add the VAE model link and also one for control net. So now we have all the models there. You could have just selected those model loader nodes and created a single node only for models if you wanted. But let's say I want all the settings I could change here too. I will add this positive prompt there as well. The dot appears right in the top left corner of the text field, so I can drag it from there. Then I want the pad settings too. I will add left, then right, then top, bottom, and feathering. Now, if we go out, we can see pretty much all the values we actually need. If I change some values really quick and test it, you can see the workflow works just as it should without any problem. So what if you change your mind? Can you go back to the nodes? Yes, you can. Right-click on the subgraph, and you have the option to unpack the subgraph. Now you have the entire workflow here as it was before. And if you moved something by mistake, you can use Ctrl-Z to undo and get it back to where it was, as long as the workflow wasn't saved. Let's try again, but this time, make it even more simple. I will include this node also in the subgraph. I will keep out the load image node, delete the image comparer, and also keep out the save node. 
select all the other nodes and convert them to a subgraph. Now let's go inside the subgraph. We have the node there, so we can set up the models however we want inside, and I will just need the pad info since that is what I use most often. Change the node name to Outpaint, and now we have the most minimalist workflow for outpainting ever, and it all works how it should. What more could you ask from a comfy UI workflow? Once you are happy with the results, don't forget to save the workflow. You can use Save As, and it will be saved automatically in your user folder under Workflows. But I want to export it since I have mine in the cloud, so I can access them from any computer. Many times I just delete my comfy UI folder and reinstall it fresh, so having them exported helps a lot. We can also try this with other workflows, maybe with a Quen text to image workflow. For this one, I probably only need the size from the empty latent and the prompt. So let's select everything except the save image node and make it a subgraph. Then we go inside, create a link for the prompt, and another two links for width and height. Now look at this beautiful, simple node for text to image. This is great for organizing your workflows, and I might create compact versions of my other workflows, so you can use those too if you want a more minimalist look. If you found something useful, leave a like and a comment to help with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much, Legends, and everyone who subscribed to the membership and supports me. I wish you a great day, and I will see you on Discord.